Hi everyone, welcome back. Dr. Angela here with you. Hi, Dr. Patty. In this video, we're gonna talk about holiday hangovers. It's definitely a time of year where some of us have a little bit more than we typically would in terms of there's parties, there's social functions, mm -hmm. and so we're gonna talk about how to prevent a miserable hangover. <laughs> I don't drink actually, so I've never had I've had a food hangover, but I've never had an alcohol hangover. <laughs> oh, but man. Uh, there's definitely um, some options here for you guys. Yes, I'm one of those where I'm just like the happiest, giddiest drunk when I drink. And oh, so it's the best kind. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could drink and not get a hangover, but I am that person where my genetics, I got the jackpot in terms of the genetics that equal horrible hangover. Mm. And so here is why we get hangovers. Hangovers happen for three primary reasons. One is dehydration. When we use alcohol, it inhibits a, a hormone that normally keeps water in the body, so water passes out even more freely. So dehydration is a major reason that we get hungover. Another reason is that drinking alcohol makes a toxic metabolite as we're moving it through the liver. And so um, helping our livers to process that toxic metabolite will help us to not get a hangover. And then we now know that that metabolite actually causes oxidative stress. So we hear so many things about oxidative stress causing the problem. So if we hit those three And meaning, areas, just to clarify, yeah. that that oxidative stress means in layman's terms that it's actually damaging the cells of the liver yeah. and creating more inflammation. And so yep. you're feeling the effects of that on top of your liver now processing this you know, essentially, sorry to be a buzzkill, but it's essentially a poison. Our bodies yes. have figured out a way to metabolize and break it down. And, you know, so we feel good and um, it can get it out of our system, but it is essentially a poison. Yes. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I know. So those of us who have done our genetic pathways and we know that our liver detox pathways have been affected, we don't clear things as well. And if we have oxidative um, stress pathways that don't work as well to regenerate things like glutathione, um, we will be hit harder with mm -hmm. hangovers than other people who could drink the same amount and be fine. And also women mm -hmm. um, due to lower body weight and lower amounts of enzymes. And the reason why I don't drink is because it's also very common to have lower tolerance or more intolerance to alcohol mm -hmm. in um, people of Asian descent. Now, I always joke Somehow I ended up with a ton of Asian friends who all can drink like fish, and I somehow got the gene and the lack of enzymes to break it down. But um, it is actually Native Americans and also Asians very common. So in addition to sort of the genetics that Dr. Angela was mentioning. Yeah, so here's some of the things if we're going to drink and we are prone to hangovers that we can do to prevent them and work on getting rid of them faster if we should happen to wake up with a nasty hangover. So first of all, prevention is the best cure. So Dr. Patty was saying, well, you could just not drink, and that's true, you could just not <laughs> she, drink. Before the video started, she said, we're going to talk about prevention, right? And I just said, oh, you mean just not drink. <laughs> That's the that's the less fun <laughs> the less fun version. Yes, <laughs> but obviously the, an option. <laughs> yes. Um, so water, drinking lots of water before you go out um, to support our detox pathways. We need lots of B vitamins. So if you have a good B complex at home, you can take that. We need lots of amino acids. So eating foods that are amino acid or protein rich the day before, great. Um, definitely taking some NAC or glutathione before you go out the door. Those things would be great things that would minimize your odds of waking up with a horrible hangover the next day. I've also um, told my patients and even friends that you could take a little bit of activated charcoal mm -hmm. before you, either before you leave for the night or after you come home before you go to bed. Just to, what activated charcoal is going to do is just help bind toxins. So all those um, acidic byproducts and metabolites of the alcohol, your body's going to be trying to get rid of and the activated charcoal will help to bind a little bit more. But, um, you know, it's very, very important disclaimer here that you should not take any kind of a binder or activated charcoal or any kind of clay products, that kind of thing, long term, because not only will it bind toxins, but it will also bind our minerals that we need to absorb. So you can, you know, if people have other conditions, sometimes you're, you take uh, binders for a while. <coughs> Excuse me but you don't want to take it un without the doctor's supervision. But one, when you come home after drinking, maybe one in the morning to help bind. Yeah, that's such a great point. I'm so glad you said that because it's one of those things of like, it sounds like a great thing, something that's gonna bind your toxins, I'll just take yeah, that every day, yeah. but you can really get into trouble if you take it mm -hmm. ongoing, but fantastic in a situation like that. 
So, okay, if you wake up the next morning and you're feeling a little woozy, maybe you've got a headache, maybe you're nauseous, maybe you're shaking that awful feeling, um, first thing, definitely start with more water the next day. And then we really want to work on electrolytes because we lose mm -hmm. our minerals when we drink. And, so. and not just regular water, mm -hmm. but even if we're going to get into electrolytes in a second, but um, sticking to mineral water. Yeah. So in order to get some of those minerals that you've lost, get some, just not just your filtered water, but mineral water. And speaking of adding either electrolytes or trace minerals, and we'll link some uh, products that we enjoy down mm -hmm. below. And you can add those trace minerals, packets, capsules, powder, yep. liquid, drops, you yep. know, whatever, whatever you've got. And often you can even pick them up at your local health food store. Definitely. And a lot of you guys have coconut water in your fridge. Mm -hmm. That's a great source of electrolytes. Um, if you happen to have some pre-made soups, because most of us are probably going to not be able to cook so much the next morning for super hungover, but mm -hmm. um, having soups, um, all those broths are going to be very rich in minerals. We're going to want to get some sodium, so salt. We're going to want to get some potassium, some magnesium. So whatever you've got around to mm -hmm. um, bring those electrolytes up and minerals up, you're going to feel a lot better. And a green juice mm -hmm. even. Definitely, you know? And we're going to get into foods in a second, but a green juice, would, if you're not, you know, if you don't have the stomach to be eating the next day, definitely doing a green juice and that will give natural minerals through food and through the leafy greens. Definitely. And mm -hmm. then again, we're going to start up with more liver support and detox the next day. So, um, B vitamins are great, but making sure you've got some food in your stomach. So sometimes we don't feel like we want to eat, but if you take a B complex on an empty stomach, that could definitely, you know, create a little bit more nausea. So mm -hmm. making sure you get down what you can eat. Um, if you um, have collagen powder and you use collagen, that's a great source of aminos that most of us have around. If you have... But what are some of the aminos that if you've got actual aminos yes. or if you look in the description box down below, what are... Yeah. Um, Dr. Angela uses more aminos in her practice than I do. Yeah. So I love glycine. I love taurine. So a lot of these are both mood um, aminos, but they're also great for our detox pathways. Mm -hmm. um, inositol is a really good one to have around. Um, MSM is very detoxing for the liver. As well so those are all great ones to use individually in mm -hmm. higher doses if you've got them and we'll put that all in the description box for you guys but if you don't have the individual ones of those um, you can definitely reach for combo things like if you're plant-based you could grab um, Bragg spray that would be a rich source of aminos mm -hmm. um, definitely if you've got you know soups that's a, a way that like protein gets broken down into food yeah. you know that we easily get that in and then of course herbs, herbs you know liver supportive like liver nourishing herbs yeah. and many of you already know but we definitely need to mention milk thistle is going to be a great one. one to help support all those liver cells um, and then dandelion yes. as well so you know this Go out in your yard. I mean, don't do that really, but <laughs> unless you have a nice organic yard. But dandelion um, greens in a yes. juice, um, in a spoon, in a in a soup, yes. in a salad, and you had yeah. A, a sort a of, is it a Greek? It's a Greek thing. It's uh -huh. I mean, Italians do it a lot too, but you uh -huh. know, you eat um, dandelion greens and fish quite a bit. I mean, it's a cultural thing. Uh -huh. And so there was always a pot of dandelion greens on the stove and then we would eat the greens with lemon and oil and then drink the water. So the tea, the dandelion tea of the boiled greens with um, like maybe a half of a squeezed lemon and a, a tablespoon or so of just oil poured in. I while love it's that idea. It's delicious. I, it. I think it's delicious. I like I it. said, I I'm, don't need it for hangovers, but just to <laughs> get more bitters and oh, the greens. Yeah. It's so cleansing yeah, of the Yeah, I'm liver. definitely going to do that. So I think that's a wonderful option of another way to get some dandelion in. And then one of my favorite herbs that I use for blood sugar, immune support, colds and flus is berberine. That's the hot one these yeah, days. Yeah, <laughs> it's going to be, it's Oregon grape specifically has been one of my most favorite herbs, but just berberine, you can get the actual component um, in a capsule form mm -hmm. and that's going to be wonderful for your liver as well. Yep. Um, so in addition to maybe doing like this homemade dandelion tea situation, but yes. I love the idea of putting, making it like a savory tea, yes. almost like yes. a soup as yes. opposed to just like an herbal tea. Yeah, I love that idea. There's other foods that we can eat that are all um, liver loving, liver mm -hmm. supportive. So if you're not too hungover <laughs> to eat, and you can actually, always order in if you are. <laughs> yeah, you're like, can I have some artichoke and broccoli and dandelion? We're in LA, many of us. <laughs> True. If you're in LA, I guarantee you there'll be a place where you can do that kind of Postmates situation. <laughs> but like I just said, broccoli is great. Yes. Um, asparagus, yep. artichoke, yep. Um, burdock root. Yep. 
Um, onions and mushrooms are going to oh, be helpful. Onions and mushrooms. And, um, uh, you know, just be a little mindful of onions if you have SIBO or an onion sensitivity. Yeah. Um, but those are all really good foods for your liver. So try to incorporate those when you do eat the next day. Yeah, right? those would all be great. Mm -hmm. And then our big heavy hitter and antioxidants that we talk about a lot for the liver, NAC and glutathione. And you could certainly take both if you have them at home. A lot of us just have NAC. It's a little bit more cost effective than glutathione. Um, but so either or of those would be a fantastic. So glutathione thing. is is our body's super antioxidant. Yes, and our liver does make some, but we deplete it mm -hmm. when we drink. And it's one of the main players in liver detox. So yeah. think of it as like master antioxidant, master detoxifier. Calming I, inflammation. I actually have a little story. The My first introduction to glutathione in medical school, what is that, like over 15 years? When I This was probably like first or second year of school. So now this is like, we're talking 20 years ago. <laughs> and I remember a girlfriend of mine, there was a product back in the day, it does still exist, but it, there's better ones out there now. There was a product when we were first year medical students called Reconcostat, mm -hmm. and it was mainly used for cancer patients. And it was because it was high dose uh, glutathione. Mm -hmm. And it was like over $100 for the little jar. And, and the reason why I say there's better ones now because that was like in a powder form and now we know liposomal is better. And so anyways, conversation for another day. <laughs> but a girlfriend of mine was like, oh my God, you guys, I have figured out the cure for hangovers. She basically took a bunch of Reconquistat, <laughs> glutathione, before she went drinking. It works. <laughs> and then took it again the next day. And she said, I always get hangovers. She was a big drinker. And she was like, this is the first time ever in my life I've never had a hangover. So this this stuff, this shiz works. I actually have a story I now too. Cursed. <laughs> I was at a conference once too, and it was a liposomal transdermal. So it was a spray of glutathione. Oh, so, even easier. <laughs> so stinky, because glutathione is definitely very sulfur rich. Mm. But there, you know, we got a sample of this wonderful glutathione product. And we were all running around spraying this on ourselves. And of course, we all had some libations that night. And all of us who normally are very prone to hangovers. She's like from the 1800s who says <laughs> libations. <laughs> anyway, so you had some libation. None of us had hangovers with this spray wow. liposomal glutathione That's product. That's amazing. If we can find that, we'll link, we'll it, link it down below. Yeah. So yeah. you're going to smell sulfury, though. That's the only thing. If you get a partner, they may not appreciate that smell so much, yeah. but it works. And NAC is the precursor to mm -hmm. glutathione, if you're wondering what that is. And we did do a video all about NAC, so we'll link that below and in, in the cards. Yeah. Um, so take you can take them together. You can take NAC alone. You can take glutathione alone. Um, you know whichever works for you, whatever you've got around. And then B vitamins. Yes. I was just reminded though, as we were yeah. talking about NAC and glutathione though, that so one of the things that happens when we drink is we get really depleted in our antioxidants, including glutathione. And then a lot of us will start to have a headache, not feel good. And it's very common for people to reach for Tylenol. Never reach for Tylenol. Tylenol further depletes glutathione stores and it can cause acute liver failure. It's metabolized through the liver. Definitely. And your body's metabolizing the alcohol. So it's just like over. It's a double whammy. And um, it's a really common thing that happens. And so um, just if you have a headache and you need a painkiller, reach for something else. Reach for ibuprofen, something else, but don't reach for acetaminophen. Um, if you acutely have been drinking and you've depleted. Yeah, depleted a lot of people might mistakenly come home, either preventatively or before they go to bed, pop a couple of Tylenol or wake up with a hangover and take Tylenol. So th not all painkillers are created equal. Not all over-the-counter painkillers are created equal. Yeah, so in this case, we want to be very careful of anything that would acutely deplete our glutathione because mm -hmm. that could cause problems. So just steer clear of that one. Mm -hmm. um, and so getting back to yes. some things besides NAC and glutathione, yeah. you mentioned B vitamins. Yes. Um, and so then we said our herbs too, like mm -hmm. our milk thistle. Mm -hmm. And then vitamin C yes. is another one you can take the next day, um, as well as theanine. Yes. Right? Yeah. Oh, thank you. I forgot this one. So theanine is so amazing. Theanine you can actually take beforehand too. <laughs> um, theanine will actually prevent... Um, oxidative damage happening in the liver. It reduces it. And so a lot of us have theanine for anxiety and calm mood laying around or for sleep. And that is actually a wonderful preventive to take um, before going out drinking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you think theanine is for calming, but it will actually help produce more glutathione. Yes. And then if nausea is your main issue when you wake up the next day, um, I suggest you can actually do a little bit of organic 
uh, raw apple cider vinegar in some water. Don't ever take it straight, it will burn. Mm -hmm. So take it in a little bit of water. Mm -hmm. And then just an old standby ginger, ginger tea, ginger capsules. Um, and some of it is just gonna be time. Time as your body rehydrates to get rid of the metabolites. And so just lots of rest and being gentle with yourself. But doing some of the things before and then some extras the next day will surely, surely help um, with hangovers. Yeah, we hope it prevents it all together, mm -hmm. but it will surely clear it out much faster if you happen to be suffering from this miserable condition. <laughs> 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 so hopefully you found this video helpful. Please give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed. If you think anyone um, you know may enjoy or appreciate Share it with the your video. friends, going yeah, to holiday parties. Definitely. <laughs> and we will see you back here soon. See you back here soon. Thank you so much for being with us.